football. They had their makeup games against Century last night in the Capitol. Tonight they split home and away against Jamestown. The boys hosting Jamestown and Magic City campus. The athletes honoring teachers at the game who've made an impact on their lives by giving them the road jerseys to wear. Nice gesture. Minot up in the first quarter. A behind the back pass here to Noah Meissner for the Blue Jays gets the two for them. Minot with the ball now though. Fisher Johnson creating a lane for himself. Goes over a defender getting the layup to fall. And then moments later, Minot's back with it now. Eric Wincheski puts up a shot. Here's why you fight for rebounds, kids. The ball ends up getting back to him. He puts it back in for two and draws the foul for the and one. Minot would pull away in this one in the end. It was close early on. They would get the 35-point win, though, over Jamestown at home. That's their second win in two days. Majets at Jamestown. Here's a look at Lily Bell gathering up a loose uh, rebound. She finds teammate Presley Bennett near the top of the key who drains the three. A lot of great shooters on this team. Tough to defend. Jamestown with the ball. The pass goes to Amelia Newman with the head fake. She buries a three of her own. Other end of the court again, Maggie Fricky doing Maggie Fricky things, going to work, finds a lane, gets the kiss off the glass, and draws the foul for her own and one. The Majets rolled to a big victory on the road, meaning Minot would get the sweep of Jamestown tonight. On the ice now, Minot playing host to Williston. Let's head to the Pepsi rink at Mesa Arena. Hey, it's senior night at the Mesa. Seniors on the hockey and cheer teams honored with displays in front of the arena. Congrats to the athletes on great careers. Best of luck. We pick, up it, we pick it up late in the first period. Minot's already up 1-0, and they're threatening to score again. First shot doesn't go, but Easton Panisa gets the putback and puts the biscuit in the basket, as they say. It was 2-0, actually. Minot now goes up 3-0. Now, moments later, Minot's threatening to score again, but this time it's the uh, Coyotes goalie with a big stop here. That's followed by a big hit, though. little extracurricular activity. It's the home ice magicians would blow this one open later on in the game. They end up skating to the 13-2 victory. Here's a look at the scores for today's play-in games for the District 8 Girls Basketball Tournament. The Velva Aggies holding off Drake Animus. Meanwhile, Harvey Wells County bests Glenburn. Also, we had a close one between Bishop Ryan and West Hope Newburgh. The Lions would edge out the Sioux by two. So what does that mean for the bracket? Here's a look at the updated bracket. On Thursday, number one overall seed, our Redeemers, will face Harvey Wells County. Number two, Surrey, will face Bishop Ryan. And TGU will face off with Velva. The 4-5 matchup, Lewis and Clark Berthold versus MLS, is already set. The district semifinals are Friday with the championship Saturday. Now, if Mother Nature impacts all of this, we'll, of course, let you know. Top four finishers for the district qualify for regionals. In the college game, Minot State men's basketball moved a few spots this week in the latest coaches poll. The Beavers rank number 15 in the latest Division II Top 25. It's the fourth consecutive week that Minot State's been ranked nationally. Beavers are now on their way to Moorhead to face number 9 Minnesota State Moorhead on Thursday. That should be a great game. Hey, that's all we have in sports.